I'm standing in Ballantubber Abbey Church. Ballantubber Abbey is one of the landmark tourist attractions in County Mayo, and Muriel Barry is the tour guide here at Ballantubber Abbey. Muriel, working in Ballantubber Abbey is an experience in itself. Yeah, it's such an amazing place. I'm really passionate about Ballantubber Abbey. I think the history here is just so extraordinary. Um, when you imagine that this was a focal point of pagan spirituality or Celtic spirituality, when, pe when Irish people were going to what's now called Croke Patrick, but they were going in pagan Ireland to worship the sun when it was called Cruachan Eagle or Eagle Mountain. And there was a well here that was sacred to the pagans. And that's really the background to why the Abbey was founded here. Because Patrick was coming into the west of Ireland to bring on a mission of conversion, really, on, to do with the people in the west. He came upon a well that was here where the pagans would stop and have a ritual on their way to the mountain. And that caused Patrick to stop here and found a church in 441. And believe it or not, there's been Christianity ever since. And the connection between here and what's now called Croke Patrick dates back to 441, when Patrick went from here to the mountain and prayed and fasted for the 40 days and nights. And of course, that's normally what's commemorated last Sunday, Reek Sunday, when you know up to 25,000 people have, have climbed it in other years. So it's a real focal point today even. And we have what's called the Toher Forik. It's a pilgrim path that people still walk today. Now, sadly, it's closed for this year, Tommy. But normally, we'd have a lot of people walking right through the year and we organise pilgrimages from here to the mountain. It's a 22-mile pilgrim path that literally traces that Celtic spirituality that uh, was uh, through those fields all those centuries ago. If an individual or a couple or a family decided to take a day trip to Ballantubber Abbey, is there enough for them to see and do for a couple of hours at least? People are amazed how much there is to see and do here, Tommy, when they come. First of all, I suppose the Abbey was founded in 1216. It celebrated its 800 year, 800th anniversary in um, 2016. And when you look around and you see how beautiful it is today, it's very fresh, uh, freshly painted. Everything is, it's very much loved and looked after. And they, so first of all, in the Abbey, there's beautiful things to see. We have Stations of the Cross by Imogen Stewart. We have um, stained glass from uh, Chartres in France. We have beautiful stained glass of Patrick by St. Patrick by William Early. And then outside, and this is the thing that sometimes surprises people. And I, first of all, I suppose, just for, I have to say in relation to the Abbey, we had to put up, put up pictures of what the Abbey looked like in years gone by. Because people come and they think it always looks like this. Where, whereas in actual fact, there's just this extraordinary story of redemption and um, perseverance, I suppose, that maybe applies to today, you could say, because the Abbey was built in 1216, but it was totally burned by an English army in 1653. The doors, floors, roofs, everything burned to the sky. And what makes the Abbey unique in Ireland is that the old altar, the original altar of 1216, which is at the back wall here, continued to be used for Mass every Sunday without a break. It's the only church in Ireland that has had continuous Mass through its history. As well as that then, it was restored. And when it was fully restored, first of all, the top part was restored in 1889. The nave here was restored in 1966. When it was united and fully restored in 66, this abbey was the first in Ireland to be successfully restored from the penal times. So it was a huge cause of celebration. And it's still a beacon today of uh, Christianity in Ireland. And then Father Fahey came in the 80s. And I suppose, you know, people celebrate. There's been a number of wonderful and very special priests associated with the abbey. And many people would know Father Fahey today. He restored the building on the left-hand side here. Um, the daughter is now a retreat room. The chapter house is the visitor centre and he has plans today we have a promise of three and a half million and um, to restore what was the entry to the abbey and make it an interpretive centre for the pilgrim path but furthermore when father came in the 80s he actually developed all of the grounds and I think that's what sometimes surprises people and families come and they love to spend time here because what he did was he developed what are beautiful stations of the cross made of natural stone from around the lake shore here. 
and you, you'd be familiar with the Passion Play, of course. So at the back, we have the crucifixion and we have the tomb. And that's where the live Passion Play is held here every Easter. Then the other pathway that's well worth pa time taking to visit is what's called the Rosary Way. We have a replica of the first church what the church would have looked like in 441. And it really brings you into the context of the foundation of Christianity here. Then you, would go, you can go back to a little Irish cottage that represents the visitation. You can come out here to the right to uh, view a lovely crib, which people love to go into. Um, it's in a little cave that's here. And there's other beautiful features around the grounds. The other thing that makes the Abbey really special in my view is you can actually visit a well that's out in the field. And the well was a place where the pagans would have a ritual because water was sacred to them. And as they went to the Croke Patrick, what's now Croke Patrick for sun worship, they would have a ritual at the well. But that well is still there to visit. So people can go out and make the connection back to a centuries old tradition. So the grounds, people say how special they are, how peaceful they are, and children love to explore. And if there's a staff member here, when you're here, we have a little quiz that children can go and they can go around and do, and they get a certificate of completion. And they love to get their picture taken with their certificate. And the other thing is we have a map that people can pick up anytime, and it brings them right around because we want them to see everything and leave with a real sense of what Ballantubber Abbey has to offer. Do you actually have guided tours during the week? The, any, any family that come or any group that come, I'm the tour guide and I look forward to welcoming anybody and giving them the history of the Abbey. And when you're in Ballantubber, there's a few other amenities that uh, our listeners could take in. Yeah, it's a really special place. And I suppose, first of all, when people come here, Tommy, they can go right across the road to Hugh Corley's, where there's lovely lunches available every day, freshly cooked food. Just around the corner, we have Brendan Murphy. He's an artisan carpenter who restores pine furniture, and it's well worth a visit. He has a beautiful showroom there. Then you can travel further along, literally five minutes by car. I think it's called, it's called the Clogher Heritage Centre, but in my view, it's a really special place to bring children because what it has is a restored um, Irish cottage and it has a restored forge. And as well as that, they have what's called the Clogher Loop Walk. So you can go out and take a walk through the bog. It's just a short walk. Families would be able to do it. And one of the special things is out in the middle of the bog, there's a little picnic table. So you could take a little picnic with you, go out with your family and just enjoy peace and tranquility. And that's a wonderful um, community venture, really, where they've put their heart and soul into developing it. And I'd ask people not to miss it. Well, I can tell you, you know your stuff, that is for sure. Muriel, thank you for sharing all of that wonderful history, not just of Ballantubber Abbey, but also the other amenities in this particular area. So if you're taking a trip to Mayo or you're taking a day out, come to Ballantubber Abbey and all of the other tourist attractions in close proximity and you'll have one great day out. Thank you, Muriel. We look forward to welcoming you to Ballantubber Abbey. And the one thing I should say, Tommy, as well, I left out Boroughscarra Abbey. It's another beautiful ruin that's worth seeing. It's very close to Moor Hall, so people can easily spend a day here. So come and visit. <laughs> Thank you, Muriel. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> as we drove away from Ballantubber Abbey, we spotted the Pine Rack, and I thought, let's see what's in here. Brendan Murphy is the owner of the Pine Rack. You love pine and everything you make here is made of original and in many cases old salvaged pine, Brendan. Yes, that's right, Tommy. Yeah, it's all made from old flooring, beams, that type of thing. Some of it has the original paintwork even from back in the day uh, from dressers, um, we'll say beams, uh, flooring, all of that sort of thing. And people can drop in here and have a look at the showroom and, and have a browse around. That's right, yeah. The showroom is open from Monday to Friday. And um, yeah, I get a lot of locals, a lot of uh, tourists. Uh, yeah, so they can come in, browse around. And it's more, come in even for a chat, even if they don't need, need to buy, you know, at least they know where I am. And can they see you at work, Brendan? Yes, they can, yeah. If they ask me nicely, I'll show them. <laughs> okay, so check it out. The Pine Rack, right next to Ballantubber Abbey. And if people want more details, your website? Is uh, www.pinerack.com. Pinerack.com or call uh, 087 Listen, you're a busy man. I'll let you back to work. Thanks, Tommy. No bother.